Good morning, and welcome to Virtual Praise on this, the 21st of November, 2021. I invite you now to clear your minds and incline your heart as we go together to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. We come this day rejoicing 
in the presence of the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. At his birth, the angels proclaimed his name to be Emmanuel, God with us. Today in this place, in this time of worship, may we truly feel the power and presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. May our hearts and spirits be warmed and challenged to proclaim with our lives, Christ is Lord. Amen. Our Gospel lesson this morning comes from St. John's Gospel in the 18th chapter. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? <laughs> Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We have trouble believing in a king in our lives. Early in our nation's history, we rejected monarchy as something undesirable. Yet this day we are called to recognize Jesus Christ as the king of our lives, our sovereign ruler. His kingdom is based on the laws of love, loving God as God has truly loved us, and loving our neighbor as we ourselves want to be loved. That love extends beyond the borders of our lives, into a world in which there is fear and alienation, hunger and disease, hopelessness and darkness. Jesus, our sovereign ruler, our friend, our master and guide, has asked us to reach out to feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, visit the sick and those in prison, welcome the stranger. These words are not unfamiliar to us, yet somehow we have treated them as nice words, but not an active part of our life of faith. Forgive us, Lord, for the meagerness of our faith and the weakness of our witness. Rule our lives again with your powerful love, that we might truly be worthy disciples of yours. Help us to find the forgiveness which you have given to us and to do your will. Amen. And now my sisters and brothers receive this assurance of pardon for our many sins. Even though we have often failed to do as our Lord Jesus has asked, yet there is eternal forgiveness and a chance to again follow his ways. Be assured, dear friends, that the love of Jesus Christ will never leave you. Be his witnesses throughout the world. Amen.
This is the good news that we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved, if we hold it fast, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our second reading this morning comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 132, beginning in the first verse. Lord, remember David and all his self-denial. He swore an oath to the Lord. He made a vow to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house or go to my bed. I will allow no sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids till I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. We heard it in Ephathra. We came upon it in the fields of Jar. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool, saying, Arise, Lord, and come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. May your priests be clothed with your righteousness. May your faithful people sing for joy. For the sake of your servant David, do not reject your anointed one. The Lord swore an oath to David, a sure oath he will not revoke. One of your own descendants I will place on your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and the statutes I teach them, then their sons will sit on your throne forever and ever. May God bless the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Would you go with me now in prayer? Sovereign Lord Jesus, come into our hearts today and take your reign. Remind us that your kingdom is a kingdom of hope and light in which there is no darkness, fear, or sadness. You have called us to be the kingdom people, living our lives in the knowledge that peace, justice, and hope are not only possible but can actually be the ruling factor of the world for those who follow you. There are many who do not acknowledge your presence and your name, O Lord, but in your infinite love and mercy, you have acknowledged and claimed them. Help us to be the kind of disciples that welcome everyone with the words of kindness, that offer acts of mercy and peace to all in need to proclaim Christ risen and glorified. As we have brought before you, O Lord, the names of people and situations needing your healing and comforting touch, may we also open our hearts for that same healing and comfort. Remind us that we are never out of your grace and mercy. We know that you will give us the strength and wisdom to be true disciples, and we celebrate and honor you now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing unto you, O Lord. May your word be proclaimed either through me or in spite of me. I ask in the name of the living Christ. Amen. Christ the King Sunday celebrates the end of the Christian calendar and the start of the Advent season. It's also called the Reign of Christ Sunday, or the more formal setting, the Solemnity of Our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe. The significance of the day is that we acknowledge that Jesus Christ is our only King, that no other ruler surpa surpassed Jesus in this world. As with many of the special holy days that modern Christians follow, Christ the King Sunday started as a rite of the Roman Catholic Church. And it only became a holy day in 1926 when it was declared by Pope Pius XI in response to the ravages of the First World War. So what should we make of this day when we proclaim our allegiance to Jesus, the King of the universe? After all, didn't we fight a revolution to break free of a king? How is it that our culture accepts the existence of one and only one king? Especially since we are so accustomed to electing our multiple representatives in government. Well, let's begin by examining the normal characteristics of kings and kingdoms. First, let's recognize that kings are typically, but not always, part of a familial lineage of royals. That kings are absolute rulers. Whatever they say goes. Kings hold the power of life and death over their subjects. Kings decide whether to take their, their kingdom to war or to seek peace. Kings are typically the head of whatever national religion is practiced. They determine what is moral and what is immoral. Case in point, of course, being the Church of England and the fact that the king or the reigning monarch at the time is the head of that church. Now, kingdoms can be vast stretches of land, or they could be as small as an island that can be walked across in the span of one day. Kingdoms are fought over and their borders disputed, often because of some natural resources that they possess. An example of which might be a fresh water source, fertile ground for growing crops, or perhaps precious metals, such as gold. Sometimes kingdoms go to war in order to conquer another king or to defend against a marauding kingdom. Now let's step back for a moment and compare and contrast Jesus as king to our standard description of a king and, and his kingdom that we've just finished talking through. Now, Jesus is of David's royal line, so no problem there. Jesus is the Son of God, our Creator. And that's pretty high up the food chain. Jesus overcame death so that we could have eternal life. So I think it's safe to say that he has some authority over life and death. Jesus goes to war every day against the prince of darkness in order to preserve and protect our mortal souls. It is Jesus' long-term goal to put an end to all wars. I think I can say without any dispute that Jesus Christ is the head of his church. Through his teachings and those of his predecessors, we have a moral compass to guide us and for us to turn to as we live each and every day. 
Jesus is king over all of the world. That's a pretty big territory. There's nowhere where anyone can claim or challenge his authority. It would be fair to say that Jesus does battle with Satan every day because Satan wants the most valuable resource in God's kingdom, the souls of God's children. That daily struggle, which Satan can never win, is our best defense against the temptation of sin offered by the malevolent spirit of Satan. It seems to me that if we accept the first set of definitions of kings and kingdoms, then we must also accept as truth in our lives the applicability of these same definitions to Jesus the Christ. But there is one significant difference between a mortal king and the king of the universe. Mortal kings rule by fiat with severe punishment reserved for those who will not abide by the king's rules. Jesus, the king of the universe, gives us a choice for which, for which there is no prescribed painful consequence. If we choose to live according to God's laws, we have a fairly reasonable, better than even chance of entering the kingdom of heaven. If we choose to ignore or deny those laws, it's likely that we will be denied entry into eternal life. Meaning that this life, this is as good as it gets. The example of Adam and Eve being permitted to survive but suffering the loss of God's favor should be for us a cautionary tale. Well, let's turn quickly to why we even need to acknowledge or have a king like Jesus. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to grasp how self-destructive humanity has become. Whether it is through the development of terrible weapons that can trigger global extinction, or through our lack of any sort of moral compass, we seem determined to snuff out God's beautiful creation. All of us, all of us, fall far short of the glory of God. And God already knows this. The triune God is not concerned with our ability to intimidate or threaten him. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are the source of the life that is within us. That's one of the reasons why I believe that as surely as God has brought us into existence, he can also terminate that existence at any time. I don't see that, however, as an implied threat so much as historical evidence that God's patience is not endless. You might say that Jesus the King is that which protects us from ourselves, especially where our sinful nature is concerned. We have hope as a result of our acknowledgement of Jesus as King. And hope is the first gift of Christmas that we will begin to celebrate next week. May we forever maintain our allegiance to Christ the King, thereby helping ourselves to one day be able to reside among the saints who have gone before. Amen.
And now, my friends, receive this benediction. Go now in peace. Bring the good news of God's eternal love, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to all that you meet. Go in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a safe and blessed week. Have a happy Thanksgiving. I look forward to being with you again next Sunday on the very first Sunday of Advent. God bless. Let our mortal flesh keep silent and with fear and trembling stand Ponder nothing earthly minded For with blessings in His hand Christ our God to you